I'd like to start with an opening statement from head coach David Braun. Exciting day for uh, for Northwestern football. Uh, most importantly, our players, and uh, you know everyone that's been involved in in such a such a special season. Um, you know, starting off with again our our players, uh, this coaching staff, support staff, uh, the university as a whole, uh, those that have been with us, you know, the entire time. Uh, some incredible, you know, experiences on the road and specifically at Ryan Field. Uh, just a just a just a culmination of all those things. But you know, going into this knowing that you know our our team was going to have an opportunity to you know, have this much extra time together and an opportunity to go compete one last time with this group was something that, uh, you know, we we all are very proud of. And and now to know that we, uh, you know, have an incredible opportunity to, you know, uh, continue to develop this roster uh, and, and prepare for a very talented, well-coached Utah team is something that that all of us um, are are very excited about and, and, and look forward to. Um, but th th this is an opportunity that, you know, this, this group certainly uh, is thrilled about and, and understands that uh, there's going to be a lot of work ahead for us to be uh, be ready and prepared to, to be at our best on, uh, on December 23rd. Yeah, we'll open up to questions. First question is to Matt. Hey, Coach. Uh, after Illinois, you said you would kind of start assessing your staff uh, where are you in that process, and do you anticipate any changes before the bowl game? You know, the, we we started this this ride together, Matt. You know, as a staff, and you know, uh, as a group, uh, you know, with with our players. Uh, you know, we we we've been hard at work. We've, we're two practices in. We're deep into recruiting. You know, there's been some conversations that you know have been had in terms of how we chart chart forward, but no. No decisions have been made on staffing. And, uh, you know, what I can tell you is, you know, we started this thing off together and we fully anticipate on December 23rd we'll we'll, we'll have this group together and and finish this thing off together the, the right way. Next question to Bradley Locker. Hey, Coach, you're going against Kyle Whittingham from Utah, veteran head coach, I think, in his 19th season there. Just what has it been like to learn from him at all, to go against somebody like that? What does it mean to have that opportunity and what challenges simultaneously do you think it'll present to you? You know, it'll be it'll be a tremendous challenge. And you know, I don't I don't think Coach Whittingham knows this, but you know, I, I commonly will uh use the Utah program as as a model that I really admire in terms of the way that they've built that program, <clears throat> the the way that they play complementary football and team football. Uh, you know, I had a chance a couple of years ago um, you know, to to go out to Utah and do some professional development around their defensive staff and just even just being around the facility and the way that they operate, um, you know, something to, you know, strive for and, and uh, you know, certainly a tremendous amount of respect for the way that, that Coach Whittingham has built that program. Uh, and uh, you, you, know, you, you can know that that, that team's going to show up ready to play. They're going to be prepared. They're going to play complimentary football. It's going to be a physical brand of football that continues to show up on tape this year. And, you know, I go back to their Pac-12 championship win uh, last year and just, you know, what was on full display. I think that's a model for, you know, what what winning football looks like. So we, we certainly uh, un understand the uh, challenge that's in front of us and, and excited to, to embark on that challenge. Next question to David. Hey, Coach. Um how you go through bowl preparation in terms of getting the guys ready to go to Vegas and play, but also using this extra month um, to get some of almost start spring ball early and get a look at what these young guys can do. Yeah, no, that, that that's a really good question. And, and, you know, I don't want to say it's a challenge. It's just unique. I mean, December 23rd is off the early bowl game, which comes with, with great benefit as well, but it's probably not as long as a time period as we would have initially anticipated. Uh, we're two practices in uh, th those practices were utilized to, you know, really lean into individual and development of our entire roster. You know, we'll continue that model as, as we continue to move forward in these early practice while teaming that with, you know, specific Utah prep. But, you know, as long as we're still here in Evanston and, and not on bowl site, we're going to be intentional about making sure that there's some practice time, you know, solely dedicated to develop this entire roster and, and really use it as a, you know, opportunity to have a, you know, 
spring ball come early, if, if, if you want to call it that. But, you know, just an incredible opportunity for everyone within this program to continue to improve and uh, find ways to stack some some development as we uh, look to to go win a football game on the 23rd, but continue to improve this roster for for the future. And Next I know question. you've mentioned in a oh, – sorry, Jacob, I guess. I guess All right, about, David. Um, and, you know, you mentioned – thank you. You mentioned in fall camp you guys ran a dual field system at times. Would you envision something like that? I know indoor right now, but envision something like that. We're splitting uh, the fields to maybe get some of the young guys more reps in practice compared to maybe a usual scout team look that they would be on now. Yeah, I, I wouldn't see us going that route, you know, at, at this stage. Um, more some opportunities to maybe scale back on reps for our older guys that have played a ton of, you know, game reps this season. Uh, that, that That's more of a model that we see continuing in, in spring ball opportunities and fall camp specifically. Next question goes to Lawrence. Hey, Coach, uh, I know you talked about your um, initial reaction to hearing um, getting this bowl, but have you talked to the other coaches, even the players, and just their excitement for the bowl game, especially being in uh, Las Vegas? Yeah, no, you, you know what, uh, in, in full uh, transparency, you know, the the only thing that I've seen is, uh, you know, some of these group chats absolutely buzzing when uh, when the news come, came out. You can tell that our guys are excited, the staff's excited. Uh, you know, we're, we're not in the facility today. Uh, you know, with finals coming up this week, we gave our guys today off after practice yesterday. Staff, you know, some of our staff is already on the road with with recruiting. And, uh, you know, uh, but but you can tell through uh, just the the buzz on these group chats that, you know, we got a group that's really excited to uh, know, know where we're going, know who our opponent is and uh, and get to work. Next question to Bradley. Coach, uh, you talked about kind of finishing this season together as a staff and re relating that element to the players. So right now, do you anticipate any of your players in the early stages opting out of this bowl game? I, I don't. I don't. You know, I, I know each individual, you know, has to navigate some some considerations long term. Um, but, you know, the, the the way that we're embarking on that is just with, you know, as much open communication and transparency as we possibly can, you know, at the end of the day. Um, the role that I'm in now is to to ensure that I lead and serve this program. But, uh, you know, I've said since day one, you know, that starts with, you know, supporting and serving our student athletes. And, um, you know, to, to our guys' credit, we got a mature group that's willing to lean into good conversations and what that looks like. Uh, young men that have considerations about, you know, their football career beyond, you know, Northwestern and dreams of playing in the NFL and, a credit to our support staff of really working diligently to collect some really good information from NFL organizations and scouts to make sure that we can get that information passed along to our players. But, you know, the, the just energy in this, in this facility is uh, what's continued, you know, throughout this entire season that this group is, is hungry to, you know, continue to improve and, and, and finish this thing together. And, and they understand what an incredible opportunity is, is in front of us on the 23rd. Next question is Steve. Hi, David. <clears throat> I haven't, haven't been on Zoom in a while. I'm rusty. Um, I want to get back to Whittingham. You know, I was thinking, I was thinking back. I don't know if you remember the Sugar Bowl. Oh, wait, they, they played Alabama. He mm -hmm. beat Saban. And at the time, massive underdog. It was a huge deal. You were like 23, something like that. He was in his 40s, you know, just a really young coach kind of starting out. He He's now that guy who people name as, you know, kind of the, the best coach in the country, not at one of the Blue Bloods. You see, I don't know if you agree with that, you know, how you, yeah. if you can get more into how you view him and um, in your recollections, if you have any of that, of that, that game way back when. Yeah, no, I I I, re I remember that game vividly, you know, and uh, you know, I I remember as a young coach, you know, in my GA days, you know, walking the hallways at coaches' convention and be like, oh, hey, that's Coach Whittingham, you know, I mean, just you know, you you, you got you got big eyes and you're just like, man, that what what they're doing at Utah, and you you only get to a chance to observe it from afar, but you know, I I just think that what they've been able to you know do at Utah, even into the transition into the Pac-12 and 
you know, the the evolving landscape of college football is they've they've built a foundation and a model of consistency. Um, there's a certain understanding of what, you know, Utah football looks like and it, it evolves, but you know, it's it's rooted in fundamentals and physicality. Again, a lot of things that, you know, uh Northwestern football has been rooted in and wants to continue to be rooted in and improve upon. Uh, but, you know, just a tre tremendous amount of, you know, admiration and respect for the way that coach has done that, you know, not, not just in the short term, you know, you know, small window. I mean, it's, it's been a sustainable foundation that has had a tremendous amount of success. And again, you know, an opportunity a couple of years ago to step into that facility and be around that staff, you know, was, was an eye opener just in terms of, um, really getting a chance to see how the inner workings of that program operate. And, uh, you know, it, what, what, what you see from the outside is what you see, you know, from the inside, just a, a, a really talented staff that recruits high character, young men that love football, that, you know, uh, play team football. And, uh, you know, I, I think their continued su success is a, is a reflection of all those things. Real quick follow-up. Does, does this Utah team, remind you most of a particular team you've already played I was thinking if you know could be Penn State or more likely maybe even Iowa you know especially as they've been stripped down playing like a number three quarterback do, do you do you see that at all uh, uh I mean you you haven't had a chance really to dive in I know yeah. but no, you know, to be honest with you, pro probably more of more of my perspective is from, like long term just observing them over the years this specific team you know haven't had a chance to you know haven't had an opportunity to watch much of them, you know, even just on a Saturday evening at night, you know, at home and, you know, ha haven't watched any of the coaches tape. But uh, the, the one thing I can say is, you you, you know, you're going to get a team that, you know, uh, plays complimentary football and plays a very physical brand of football and has consistently played, you know, high end, high end defense. Um, th th there'll be a lot of challenges that these guys pose for us as we go into prep and, you know, I, again, you know, a lot of things that I'm describing is some of the best models that you see, you know, in, 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 in the big 10, you know, and uh, you know, something that uh, will be, be, be an incredible challenge for, for this coaching staff and this group of players. Thanks. Next question to Matt. Hey coach, uh, you mentioned in the past that um, recruiting staff had a couple departures preseason where are you at in terms of the hiring or interview process to make uh, to make those additions? And then also with this being your first full kind of at the start of your first full recruiting cycle as head coach, uh, how do you feel about uh, the state of Northwestern's operation going forward from a recruiting perspective? I'm really excited about the opportunity that we have to to move forward, um, you know, in, in terms of there, there, there's balance in all that in terms of the, the hiring process. Um you know, some of those conversations have been had. Others need to continue to happen. What I can say about the people in our building right now that have really just worked their tails off to manage a unique recruiting cycle, uh, we're going to continue to lean into those people. They've done a tremendous job, a tremendous job. You know, uh, you know Brian Payton, Todd McShane, Lauren McCree, you know, Sam Mulford, I mean, the, the the list goes on and on, the people in this this program that have really worked diligently to get us to a point where we feel really excited about this recruiting class and the class of 2024. Uh, but but there's there's positions to fill. Um, there's models to evaluate. And what I'll tell you is no different than any, any other hire. You know, my philosophy on this is going to be to get it right to, and, and, and not necessarily that may not always align with getting it done fast. But there is no, I mean, you want to talk about alignment. Alignment is so critical in terms of how you structure that recruiting and scouting department to ensure that everyone within this program understands the expectations for evaluation, scouting, how we recruit the types of young men that we want to bring into Northwestern as student athletes. You know, we talk about building a sustainable model similar to what Utah has done. You know, it, it all starts. It all starts with with that and uh, really excited to, to have the opportunity to, to create that alignment. Uh, we're into that process uh, that that won't all be finalized prior to, to early signing day, but certainly hope that as we approach, you know, early January, that 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 we have that uh, that operation really rolling and, and moving into, you know, a late signing day and, and preparation for spring recruiting. Next question to David. 
Hey coach, um, I was just wondering about how does your operation change on the road going out there for a full week with all the festivities of a bowl game compared to a traditional road game where you maybe fly in the day before and go and play? It is uh, tremendously different. And uh, and I'm, I, I mean, I don't want to use the word clueless, but uh, you know, I, I'm the one that may have some of the most you know, most learning to do, you know, and Alex Nisley, our director of football operations and, and Jimmy Musling, you know, uh, our assistant director of football operations have been hard at work for the last week in terms of just, I mean, the last few weeks, honestly, uh, of just, you know, modeling out what that looks like. Uh, we're we're going to ensure that, you know, we do everything in our power to to put ourselves in a position to play our best brand of football on the 23rd. But we're also going to ensure that uh, that that our student athletes, that our guys, that everyone with with the program has an opportunity to really enjoy this bowl experience. And to be honest with you, David, that's a little different than what I'm accustomed to. I mean, playing football at this time of year in the postseason, I'm accustomed to, you know, North Dakota State, you know, playoff games, you know, you're traveling in on a Friday afternoon, you're playing a Saturday afternoon, or or, or people are traveling to you, or even in our national championship games, you know, we travel in a couple days early, but we weren't there for a full week, and and you were preparing to go play in a national championship game. There, there was just a certain... I mean, there, there was just differences. And, uh, you know, I, I've been leaning on a lot of people uh, these last few days of just really wrapping my mind around what that needs to look like to ensure we balance, um, you know, being fully prepared and ready to go win while also making sure that, you know, our student athletes get get the best possible experience uh, that 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 um, that bowl season provides. Next question to Jake. Hey, coach. So. How does a game like this against uh, a high intensity postseason game against such a tough opponent like Utah help prepare you for next season's big updated updated Big Ten landscape, where basically every game is going to pose a significant test and significant challenge to your group? Yeah, no, I, I that, that that that's a really good question. Um, you know, and, and to be to be fully honest with you, um, you know, and, and maybe people see this differently, but I I just see those as two very different things, you know, to me, this is an opportunity for us to put an exclamation point on this season. You know, could that create momentum in terms of the way we perform and recruiting and next season? It, it can, but, you know, each group is unique. Each team is unique, you know, and uh, my, my, my sole focus is going to be on ensuring that when it comes to the prep for this game, that, that we, uh, that we're, we're at our best for Utah and regardless of the results, you know, it'll be an opportunity for us as we get into January to hit the reset button, whether it be positive or or disappointing. We have an opportunity to hit the reset button and and get in a room with a group and say, hey, this is a new group with a new set of challenges. And, uh, you know, we, we we need to start from square one and and rebuild as we we prep towards a, a Big Ten schedule that we all know is 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 evolving and changing and, uh, you know, going to force us to be at our absolute best. But but that's something that I know this group's really excited about. Um preparing for this individual game. And then, you know, when, when it's time to hit the reset button, we'll, we'll do that. Time for two more questions. Louie. Hey coach, congratulations on the, the bowl bid. Um, you got the transfer portal opening tomorrow. You, you got guys still making up their minds about their futures, like you alluded to, and you got the coaching evaluation going on. I mean, how, what kind of impact is that going to have on things? Are, are you targeting specific positions or players now, or like, how, how do you see it all unfolding? Yeah. You know, that's again, another, another great question. Um, you know, it's, it's fluid and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy. There, there, there's a lot going on, you know, referencing back to, you know, the staffing of this program, um, you know, the, the staffing within our recruiting and scouting will look very different, not necessarily from the people, but from the amount of people uh, that will be in this building will look very different this time next year. So I, I think it's just being really intentional about identifying the things that matter right now. And, and that starts with just doing a great job of connecting with our current roster and understanding, you know, the intentions of, of our guys, you know, short-term and long-term um, and being here to, to support them through that while also identifying our, our needs and, uh, and then really identifying and targeting, um, you know, the, the right, the right people to, uh, you know, add into our program. But, you know, the thing that I'm really excited about, is is what we've built with this class of 24 in terms of you know high school recruiting and 
um, as we know at Northwestern, uh, and that this model will not change is, um, we'll, we'll, we'll have some transfers, but th this program will be built off of very thorough high school recruiting. Um, we got to develop as good as anyone, if not better than anyone in the country. And then we have to be very, you know, um, thorough in how we approach, you know, bringing in transfers and, um, there, there's a lot of programs around the country right now that view that very differently. They're, they're very active. They're very aggressive. They're very NIL based in their, in their transfer recruiting. And, and we're just different. Our timeline is going to look different and, and it may not look as always as, as splash, you know, uh, splash, you know, landings out of the transfer portal and that's okay. Um, Ben Bryant and AJ Henning are incredible examples of going through that process, evaluating and getting the right people into this program that have had a tremendous, you know, impact on, I mean, Cam Johnson, I mean, you know, the Richie Haggerty, I mean, the list goes on. The, 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 those guys weren't necessarily the top ranked recruits in the transfer portal, but they were the right ones for Northwestern and had a tremendous impact on our ability to have the season we've had up to this point. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, that's question of the day, Steve. Um, <clears throat> I don't, your line of work isn't the best for enjoying the moment. You know, you've had a few days where you didn't have a game bearing down on you. Um, have you had a chance in these last handful of days to think about, to enjoy the the, the ride you, you've just been on? And, and today, what was today like? Like that, did you have that kind of giddiness of, I don't know where we're going to play. Like, you know, we could be going just about anywhere and against just about anybody. And was that fun for you? Yeah. No, to answer your first question, you know, no, I, I don't know if I've had a chance to kind of take that deep breath and, and really enjoy it. Um, no, I, I definitely look forward to that post bowl game, you know, with, with Kristen and Lucas, Andrew and Blake and our family. Um, you know, I, I know already there's a lot of people that have been incredible supporters uh, of our family thick and thin that I'll be at the bowl game, whether that be family or, or close friends, uh, members of the Northwestern community that we, in, we look forward to enjoying the bowl experience with. Um, but at, at some point, you know, I, I think it's really important that, that, you know, myself and others that have been involved in this, take that opportunity to take a deep breath and, and reflect on, on what this group has achieved and the, the story that they've written together. Um, but it's, uh, you know, today, today was really neat. And, 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 you know, the, the speculation of where we could be going and for it to be real now, you know, we know where we're going. Uh, we know who we're playing and, and, and to do it with this group. Um, when that, when, when that announcement came out, when, when, when I'm getting word from, you know, Dr. Gregg and working with Kevin Clark and Alex Nisley and, you know, so, some of the staff that have been so involved and, working through the logistics and now it's official and, and to be able to pass that information along to our team. Uh, this is, this is really special. This is really special. And, you know, we already got coaches on the road for recruiting. So how much time do we get to soak in that? Uh, but, but today is one of those days that we have to take a step back and, and recognize what an incredible opportunity is for this program. And uh, we're, we're, we're honored to have it. Where, real quick, where were you and, and who were you with when you got the, uh, the news. I, I was uh I was in my office and uh got a phone call from from uh Dr. Gregg and uh quickly thereafter I'm I'm you know Alex Nisley and I are working through some things with Kevin Clark and uh credit to Alex and, and Kevin they they've done a tremendous job of I mean already the the, the schedule's laid out I mean uh the bowl manual I mean we're they're 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 off and running there's been a lot of preparation going behind the scenes to make sure that we were ready to hit the ground running. That'll wrap us up for today. Thanks, everybody, for uh, joining this press conference. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.